Welcome back to the Chad Eastie Show on News Talk KFYO. And we've been uh, talking about, even this week, if the Trump court challenges fail and Joe Biden does indeed become president of the United States, he's starting to form his uh, cabinet and his policies are becoming a little bit more clearer. But there are a lot of policies that never really got much play in the debates, did not get much play uh, in the media while the uh, campaign uh, was going. One of those, of course, being the gun issue. But also, uh, there really wasn't even a lot about immigration talked about. And our uh, next guest uh, with the Texas Public Policy Foundation, uh, he also served in the U.S. House uh, from 1995 to 2007, uh, currently uh, with the uh, folks over at uh, the uh, Texas Public Policy Foundation, the Vice President of Federal Affairs and States uh, Trust, uh, John uh, Hostetler, joining us here on the Chad AC Show. And uh, welcome to the program. Glad to have you uh, on the show this morning, sir. Good morning, Chad. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, let, let's talk about uh, uh, you know immigration, and, and I guess a, a part of this that uh, really it never came up or didn't really come up much. Uh, during the debates, it, it's still a a question mark as to what exactly Joe Biden plans to do about some of the different issues uh, that the Trump administration uh, you know, really took on, and one of those being the migrant protection protocols. Talk a little bit about that and what it may look like under a president, Joe Biden. Well, under the migrant protection protocols, otherwise known as Remain in Mexico program. Uh, when an individual uh, crossed the southern border uh, unlawfully uh, or even lawfully to uh, and made a claim of asylum, and asylum is a little different than uh, claiming refugee status. Refugee status can be claimed literally anywhere in, else in the world except in the United States. But once an individual uh, steps, steps foot on U.S. soil, uh, they can potentially make a claim for asylum uh, and that is governed somewhat differently. But with the mi- migrant protection protocols, the federal law and these international agreements permitted the uh, uh, Trump administration to uh, introduce and apply uh, in an unprecedented way this ability to send individuals uh, back to Mexico to await their their asylum hearings, uh, wait for their asylum hearings there, because uh, as probably we all know, uh, what was happening under the old regime was that they would come to the United States, they would make an asylum claim, and then they would be released into the interior with a court date, and they just never come back to that. So so the the Remain in Mexico, the MPP, Migrant Protection Protocols, uh, sent these individuals back to Mexico as a result of that agreement with Mexico to uh, to house these individuals to await their their uh, trial, uh, excuse me, their hearing in the United States on asylum. It didn't end the asylum process, but what it did was it it, it uh, stopped a significant rush to the border as the result as a result of coyotes and human smugglers essentially coaching these individuals to not flee. Um, uh, a CBP officer, a border patrol officer, but actually, but actually approach them and make a claim claim for asylum. So, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting another line, and I don't want to cut. Don't want you to cut. Uh, don't want my voice cut off. But anyway, so uh, so uh, that's what uh, the president uh, put in place. President Trump put in place right. caused a significant drop in these apprehensions at the border when the coyote industry and the people themselves found out they weren't actually going to get what they want. And that was released into the interior. The Biden uh, campaign said all of this will end and what will happen as a result of migrant protection protocols, the asylum cooperative agreements with uh, El Salvador and Honduras and Guatemala being uh, terminated will be, you're going to have this rush to the border again. And we're going to have, the crisis at the border, probably uh, unlike anything we've seen for decades. Yeah, because, I, I mean, you, 
you don't have to think back too far uh, to, too far to remember the caravans that, that were coming up yep. from Central America uh, into Mexico and and would you know just crush the really overrun the border patrol. They, I mean, they're just there weren't enough people to handle uh, the, these caravans. And yeah, it, you know, th- there's no to me, there's no good reason to get rid of these protocols. I mean, there's there's just other than wanting to uh, allow people. Uh, to, just to come into the country, there's no good reason uh, to to get rid of these protocols because they seem to be working out okay. They, they are, and they're not they're not stopping individuals with valid asylum claims. The asylum process is still in place, and if an individual can, uh, as they've been able to do for decades, prove that there's a reasonable fear of some type of political persecution then they will acquire asylum uh, in the United States. So it's not stopping the asylum process. It's just stopping the crisis at the border. Is this something he can do with just uh, executive action? Yes, uh, he can. And the only thing that's potentially stopping him from doing it on the first day is, is the fact that there will be this rush, there will be this public outcry, and uh, some folks are saying here in Washington that he's going to have to come up with a solution to that problem before he takes uh, the migrant pr- protection protocols and the asylum cooperative agreements out of place. Now, that's, that's all conjecture, uh, the idea that he's going to have something in place to to stop the the rush to the border, but that's what's being touted here uh, in Washington D.C. and and that may be some, you know, saving knowledge. But but given what he's said to his campaign followers and on the campaign trail, aside from the the debates where the moderators didn't want this to be talked about, um, he's going to do this. I just I'm imagining how this plays out with you know still the the U.S. economy not uh, you know completely back on track yet with, with you know still thousands of Americans filing for unemployment uh, every week and, and now we're going to re, basically reopen the border and allow people just to flood back into this country. Uh, it, it just listen. I understand why they would want to. Uh, you know, leave Central America and try to get into the United States. I get that. I understand that. Uh, but why a, a president would want to do that uh, while we're still in a crisis situation here? It, it's just to me, it it, it is uh, it's pretty pathetic. And, and you know, the the point you made, Chad, about the economy and individuals being out of work, it hits the nail right on the head. In that, you know, several months ago, I, I believe the Texas Tribune did somewhat an expose on this asylum system, asylum situation, I should say. And they interviewed individuals who had been sent back to Mexico uh, and who were in the process of being sent back uh, potentially even to some of the uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. And they learned that these individuals, you know, they, they just wanted to come here. They came here for a job, a better way of life, which has been the case always. But this asylum claim has been something to to uh, try to, you know, put a cloak over the real motivations of individuals. And that's why it's been so successful is that it, it's put a filter on the, you know, 90%, 95% of people who just want to come and improve their economic lot and life and the, you know, 2 to 5% who actually do have a valid asylum claim. So it's really worked, you know, on both sides uh, of the issue. It's It's stopped the... Uh, uh, the mass migration of economic uh, uh, individuals that want to come here for economic reasons, but has still allowed uh, true asylum claims to be met. Yeah. Uh, John uh, Hostetler, appreciate uh, you taking some time today, Vice President for Federal Affairs for uh, States Trust uh, with the Texas Public Policy Foundation, Almost also a uh, former uh, congressman uh, out of uh, Indiana. I appreciate your time today, and uh, hopefully we'll visit again soon. Look forward to it, Chad. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, we'll uh, visit with you again later. That's uh, John Hostetler here on the Chad Easty Show. News Talk KFYO.